Hey everyone and welcome to Already Cancelled. I am Peter, that is Connor, and we are going to talk about Firefly episode 11. I don't know, I don't really think of the numbers when it comes to Firefly. I think it's 11 we're on. Uh, this is this is trash. The episode's called Trash. Yeah, that intro was trash. Shut up. Um, so this is the episode where we see the return of Saffron slash Bridget slash Yolanda, or as at one point in this episode she's referred to as Yosaf Bridge, uh, combining all three of her names. Um, and she's got a heist, which Mal and the crew kind of reluctantly go along with, and that's the basic gist of the episode. Uh, so not quite a full-on comedy assault that the first episode with her was, no. but still moments to be had um it's you know it's funny i always remember this as being like a lesser episode of the show and i still i still think that's true after watching it again but at the same time like watching it i'm like ah this is still a lot of fun like i'm not it's it's fine yeah it's not it's not a bad episode i just think in the scheme of things it's definitely ranks in the bottom third maybe yeah no i think that's probably true um, you know, I, I, like for example, you keep making fun of me for constantly saying, oh, this is one of my favourite jokes of the show. I don't think this episode has any one of my favourite jokes of the show in it. There's some good jokes in there, but... This is probably like the first episode of like, maybe like five that you haven't said that. <laughs> hey, I, I mean, if I said, there's probably ten favourites. So there's, you know, there's, a, there's a top ten jokes. <laughs> yeah, out of a whole thirteen episodes. Out of thirteen episodes, and I've maybe used up like seven of them, so, you know. <laughs> Christ. I've got a few episodes left. I've got a few slots left. It's fine. Yep, yep, sure. It's fine. Don't, don't get me shite. Uh, so uh, we'll get we'll get straight into it. There, I got my notes. Good. Um, there's, a, there's a little scene at the start. Mal's naked, middle of nowhere, and he's just kind of like, "Yep, that went well." And we we cut back to the start of the story. So there's a TV thing that every every TV show basically ever has done at least one episode where they do this where they start at the end of the story and cut back to the start of it i would say the majority of we're most of our network tv here but the majority of network tv does this at least once a season yeah a lot of cables at least done it once though oh yeah yeah most shows have done it like you know once uh but network loves doing it every season sometimes twice yeah yeah, uh, they, they overdo it a little bit. Uh, but, you know, Mal's meeting up with an old buddy named Monty. Uh, they're picking up some cargo. Nothing uh, illegal here. There's even a, a, a line about, well, you know, sometimes the illegal work dries up. You have to sprinkle some legitimate cargo uh, once in a while. Which I think is an interesting bit of mythology for the, for the context of the show, just because, like, well, can they just have... like legitimate stuff like why why is everything kind of off the books why why can't some of it just be legitimate or they're hired to carry cargo to a said planet and it's okay it's on the up and up because it's just whatever i would assume the legitimate jobs pay less frankly because you know you're charging more for the illegal ones because there's there's the risk so true that you know it's it's more worthwhile to do those for them uh possibly i guess I'd say they probably charge about the same, but they're not paying like any sort of taxes or anything like that on the on the sure, illegal sure. jobs. Maybe that's where really the money's saved. And I think it's worth noting that in a lot, not all, but a lot of the illegal jobs are things that they still consider morally good. Uh, gen not again, not all of them, but generally speaking, they are things that they're doing for good reasons. They're just illegal. So, you know, that's, you know, yeah. but they do them because no one else is doing them. Yeah, it's only sometimes where it's like straight up stolen goods where like, oh, this is food that's marked with alliance. You know, and, um, yeah, and, we've and, done that and and they feel kind of shitty about it and things happen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was all medicine episode in the train job, you know. So, I yeah. mean, it's, it's dealt with some of that stuff, but it makes sense that they can take legitimate cargo jobs. I mean, what was... If, if anything, doing one every so often makes them look more legitimate when they're doing the illegal jobs because okay you know they've, they've got a history of doing these jobs properly so maybe, maybe they don't get you know looked at too closely when they do an illegal one although as we did find out uh a few episodes ago they've got like a fake name and papers for when they get oh, when they get when they get searched just in case yes you gotta be, you gotta be clever about it yeah, yeah, just in case. Uh, I can't remember what the name was, but there was just some fake. It's like, oh, is this your captain? Oh. And it was like Travis Huckleberry or something like that. Yeah. It was just something random. I think every every sci-fi you know space thing has done the fake transponder code to you know to pretend you're not that ship. Mm. They all do it. They all do it indeed. Uh, so 
you know, she runs into Monty, whole war buddy, um, and there's a whole it's not a joke where he's like, oh, something's different about you. Uh, it's he's, he's trimmed his, he's, or he's shaved his beard. He's left the moustache. He's still got a big moustache, but he's trimmed the uh, the soup catcher, as Mal puts it. And he's like, ah, well, she didn't much care for my whiskers. Although I would say your moustache is the whiskers. If you're, if you're going to call any part of the beard the whiskers, I'd say the moustache is the whiskers. I, I, I agree, yes. The whiskers comes from that part of the cat or whatever I, I animal. I can understand why the, the beard bit might be more irritating to some people i can understand oh, no, that. i i get why that's more irritating than a kissing con- not, not, not that i imagine kissing men with beards very often but i imagine <laughs> oh to be fair i mean it's, it's, no the mustache is literally like on your lip surely that's more irritating yeah but i'm wondering if it's like maybe she's got, maybe some people have got a sense of chin so they're, they're feeling the chin part more and it's bugging maybe. them yeah yeah, good yeah. Point. um but I, I agree with the terminology the whiskers part would yes. be the mustache, if anything. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, but you know, that aside, that aside, this is like he's like she, you know, Mal's like she. Who are you talking about? He's like, oh, I got married. Yeah, I need to meet the wife. He's like, you got married. So it's a whole thing. It's very pleasant. And then he introduces his wife, and it turns round. And who, who is it? But uh, uh, I'm just trying to remember what name she was the first time. I think it was Bridget the first time. It was Safra in this episode, but it was Bridget the first time. I'm just trying to remember which one. Mal knew her as first. Um, but she turns around. I think it was Saffron he knew her as, right? You may be right. Yeah, it was Saffron the first time. The, the last one's definitely Yolanda. Yolanda's the, the one that we hear later on in the episode. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure Saffron's what he knew her as first. That's... But I mean, I could be wrong. Uh, it was episodes ago now. Who cares? But she turns around and immediately, like, it was like a moment of, like, oh shit, and then they just both pull out their guns. Um, I think she pulls out Monty's gun, actually. She doesn't have one on her. She just pulls his out. And yeah, and Monty's got... like, what the hell's going on? He's like, oh, so you, uh... You know each other, then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're acquainted. Yes. Um, so... Uh, there's a neat little thing here where, you know, she says something, you know, like, oh, you can't trust you can't trust Malcolm Reynolds, and Monty just goes, I never got to telling you his name. And then it just cuts to him, like, take it off, and he's just yelling over the, over, like, the, the tannoy from the ship. He's like, oh, you stole my heart, you devil woman. I try, I shaved my beard for you. <laughs> and he's just flying off, all disgruntled. And it's, yeah. it's all very amusing. And she's left with Mal, and she's like, oh, you gotta give me a ride, Mal. Come on, I'm stuck out here in the middle of nowhere. That's this duck bag plant. He's like, no, I ain't giving you shit. You can stay right here. You deserve it. Um... And she tries to play him and even be like, oh, Mal, what we had was real. And he just shoots at her feet and she sticks her tongue out at him. The whole thing's just very pleasurable in terms of how it plays back and forth. Um, now this is a Mal who knows her shit, who knows knows what she, she gets up to. She's still trying to do it a little bit. But he's um, got no time for the bullshit. No, no. He's, he's, he's you know, fill me once. You yeah. know, shame on you. Fill me twice. And he's, he's not been filled twice. At least not yet. And even arguably, given where it goes at the very end of the episode, he was not really filled twice either. He he put in contingencies assuming that he would be tricked. <laughs> so, yes. I think it's debatable so, if that counts. I think if you're planning for the trick, if, if you're expecting it, you're not being fooled. Yeah, yeah. You, you're knowing your weaknesses and you're planning for them. And I think that's okay. I think that makes you a smart... Yeah. Smart person. Smart person. Ish. Yeah. She claims she's got this big job and she'll even ride in a crate or something to hide for the crew. Um, it cuts away kind of like, it, you know, as if like, no. Nah, Whether or not he, yeah. he accepted it. Why yeah. would he? Of, of course he is because there's no plot for the episode. Why introduce her at the start if we're not <laughs> going to take her with us? But he comes back on. He's got like a, a bruise, which is kind of joke about. And, you know, Kaylee's all like, but Mon- we like Monty, right? <laughs> Why did you fight with Monty? Um, and he gets up to Anara. He, he, he comes aboard and finds that Anara wants to uh, wants to speak to him. So once he gets he gets cleaned up, he goes up to Anara's shawl and he goes in. I love this scene. This scene is just fantastic dialogue between Mal and Anara back and forth. Why are you making a face? Do you not agree with this? I mean, it, it, it's a fine scene, but I, I just am surprised by the severely strong reaction. The then, love is quite a strong str- strong quantifier for this scene that this, i would not have gone that far this scene may have some of the best dialogue of the episode uh, this, this scene you know he comes in 
and she's like, oh, please have a seat. Would you like some tea? And he immediately stands up and goes, whoa, 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 whoa. What's, what's going on here? <laughs> Something's fishy. You're being too nice. Um, and he's like, you're using your whales. And he's, she's like, what? You're filming your whales. You're using your whales. <laughs> um, which is actually kind of a neat little kind of thematic link here because he kind of was doing the same thing with uh, with Saffron, your Saffbridge, <laughs> in, the, in the first scene. He was kind of like predict, no, you're using your whales on me. Um, and she's like, I'm not using my whales. And basically the scene unfolds that it's, it's she's accusing him, although she's trying to say she isn't accusing him, but she's accusing him of avoiding the legitimate planets so that she can get work. You know, the idea that he might be jealous of her actually getting clients and yeah. intentionally taking them to places where that can't happen. These little backwater planets that don't have any rich people that wouldn't be hiring her. And uh, there's, some just, there's some good back and forth uh, between them, you know, when she says, uh, I'm not sleeping with you, Mal, he's like, well, I would have noticed, my my, my sensibilities, I would have noticed this. Um, there was just lots of little, it was it was basically just, I mean, there was some good dialogue, but I think for the most part, it was it was uh, the actors, especially him, just really like, hitting the comedy beats here for me, I thought. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, the the, the comedic timing of that delivery has it's always been great, uh, you know, in the show. Yeah, um, and she starts criticizing their jobs because she's like, oh, you, can, you know, the best house she ever pulled was on, a, on, you know, Ariel. It was a, you know, big alliance planet. Why haven't we went back to planets like that? He's like, no, we've been taking some proper great work. He's like, oh yeah, what was that last caper? That last bit of cargo we had? He's like, uh, was, was those little dolls with the wobbly heads. And he's like, people love those. <laughs> It's getting very defensive. He is getting very defensive. He has been challenged. He has been challenged, um, and it ends with them him basically being called a petty thief, uh, which she knows she's kind of crossed the line when she says that. She feels kind of bad, and it, she's like, "Oh, I didn't mean that." And then he calls her a whore, and she's like, "Well, I didn't take long." And it's, so it's them really, you know, hitting each other. And I think what was funny is the petty thief for him kind of is the equivalent of her being called a whore. Um, so he's, he's like, he, "No, I'm better than that." Yeah, he comes across a bit hypocritical by being offended by that. Um, but what's really neat about this is that it, you know, it it it, it cuts to him opening the crate and you know, Saffron's in there. Is okay. Let's hear this. And it goes to the title music. I think what I really like about this is obviously later on we find out that before he even goes to open the crate, that he's filled the crew in and what they're going to do. This is all part of the big master plan later on in the episode. But in a first watch. This plays like he's motivated to go and do this big heist that Saffron's got, even though it's dangerous, to kind of prove himself because he's just been accused of taking it easy and taking yeah. easy jobs. So it plays when you're in your first viewing is okay, he's motivated now to do this. He's going to take a risk that he shouldn't because yeah. he's been insulted, essentially. So you don't, you don't question it, but um, yeah. at the same time, you know, on, on knowing where it goes, it, it doesn't undermine it. I mean, that point is no longer really there that's that's not the motivation anymore not not in the sense of okay this is why he's doing it but it might yeah. still be a factor in his mind well it's, it's still i think it still plays quite well when you know what the plan is or you know they're tricking her because you can just imagine the rest of the scene with malin and Ara when she sort of says oh you know no big case he's like oh you want you know do you want a big job and then that's when he sort of fesses up well i've got saffron and a crate down there because she's got a big job so let's pull something because one of the other things that gets brought up is that anara kind of jokes and or not jokes but like says hey maybe i should get a cut of the pay since you're not letting me do my work you know maybe i should get in in the heists and get a cut of that uh, which ultimately is something she kind of does in this episode as well. Yeah. Um, so, again, you can almost see the rest of the conversation playing out as, okay, well, I've got a heist, and maybe you can be useful in this one. Um, you can you can see it kind of happening. I mean, but it, it works really well in the first viewing, because uh, oh, it feels like it, it motivates does. the cut and motivates what, what oh. they're going to do. Uh, so she explains the gun job. Uh, they're going to steal this uh, the first ever laser gun that this uh, rich collector has in his yeah. vault. And... Um, couple of my favorite bits of this scene involve she, she gets done explaining the plan she's got security codes for this 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 big fancy mansion on this planet and whatever uh and it's like a i say mansion it's it's, it's on like a floating city or a floating you know whatever it's you know it's pretty fancy it's pretty fancy yeah um and that's because because when you when you see it from the perspective of like mal and saffron like entering it during the montage later, it just looks like they're entering a mansion, like anywhere, like on a sunny day, right? But it's obviously, still like a, big, a big mansion place. Yeah, but when you see like underneath this place, it's not. It's, this is like a floating little like, island that they've got, or whatever. It's yeah, you know. it's pretty cool. So I could do one of those. She finishes explaining it, 
um, and Wash just goes, "Okay, I, I've got one question." Because uh, Saffron says, "Like I know what you're all wondering, right?" And there's two jokes that I love that come from this. I know what you're all wondering. If I have all these codes, why don't I just walk in and do it myself? And then Wash says, "No, actually, I was wondering what is she doing on the ship." <laughs> perfect um yep. and then after sh- you know they have a bit of back and forth about what he's asked then jane goes um i've got a question <laughs> if she has all these codes why doesn't she just walk in and take it herself <laughs> <laughs> probably yeah. my favorite line of the episode <laughs> honestly <laughs> no it is good and and jane so rarely gets to deliver the the comedy lines so much he's usually the butt of the comedy more than he is yeah. the the one delivering the comedy lines um, and he's still kind of the butt of the comedy here, but it's still, it just really, he's so proud that he gets to ask what sounds like a smart question. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's no him repeating the line in Ariel when he gets to the, the front of the hospital, but it's it's good. <laughs> it's not quite that, no. It's not that. Few, um, few things are. <laughs> and everyone's like, doesn't really want to trust her. Uh, Zoe says she's in, but then punches her. <laughs> punches Saffron. Just, just for good measure. Yeah, so, you know, she punches and says she's in. Um, Jane comes to Simon and River. Simon and River have to hide because if Saffron realizes who they are and it was a bounty, um, you know she'll turn them in quicker than you can say she'll turn us in. Um, you know, just a fun yeah. little bit of writing. Which it sounds about right. You know, yeah, uh, you'd kind of expect her to do exactly that. Um, you know, and, and Jane uh, is kind of arguing with them, and River says Jane's a girl's name. Is it? Like, well, Jane ain't a girl. And he gets really upset. I love how easily irritated he is by that. Yeah, he's so he's so pissed about it. And he, when he's leaving, he's because he's, they're just gonna hide him in a cabin, just like okay, just be in here and stay quiet and don't come out. And he's like, I was gonna leave you a deck of cards, and he like shuts the door. He's like, I'm mad. Uh, the, the important part of the scene though is at the end where River, uh, using her abilities, of course, uh, says uh, Jane's scared, and he's like, Ah, well, everyone's a bit tense because of the job. And he's like, No, no, he's been scared since Ariel. And it kind of sets up that she's going to at least give him some information about what Jane did. Um, yeah. Which, again, is nice that that's still playing a factor. We've not just forgotten about it. Um, you know, by the end of the episode, of course, they do know. And there's a bit of a confrontation, as it were. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. Um, another small scene is Anara saying she's leaving because she wants no part of all this. And she's, like, saying to Zoe, you know, I don't trust her. She's awful. This is terrible. Uh, and, of course, Saffron is spying and listening in on this conversation. Yeah. It, I mean, in her defense, it's kind of difficult not to overhear because Inara is making a, a big show of it. As is very much the point, as we find exactly. out later. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so then we get the plan. And I love a lot of notes for this because a lot of this was, like, cutting back and forth. We see them doing it as they're explaining it. Um, where... Classic he- heist style. Yeah, Matt Mal and Saffron go in with the codes and get to the gun while uh, Kaylee and Jane are on top of the ship, which is flying underneath the set. Because the whole plan basically, they're going to, they can't take it out of the mansion because it'll just trigger all sorts of alarms. But they figure that they can throw it in the trash, and then there's this like trash like box that's at the bottom of the island, that this floating island, and these big like droids come and take it away. But they're going to like go up manually and reprogram it from underneath. That's what Kaylee's doing outside on top of the ship because she's like, you know. Send it to their ship instead. Send it, well, send it to a location they wanted to go to. uh, Out in the middle of nowhere. But uh, uh, Jane gets knocked out during this and gets injured. So a bit of excitement. Uh, So they have to go get get, uh, Simon. And when they say, oh, uh, Jane's got a medical issue. You need to take care of it. He's like, yes. Leave it in my hands. Like he's, he's, he's the, the tone's just like, oh, he knows. J- Jane's in for some trouble. Uh, so Zoe finishes helping with uh, with the ship. Uh, yep, and part they of the job. just about get done in time. Yeah, yeah, they're about to get uh, uh, crushed by the, the the droid or whatever, and they have to sort of like dive down and and uh, but you know they they, they they succeed, and it's all it's all good. And um, of course, the more drama part of it comes from inside the uh, the mansion where they run into the guy who's there and you know saffron earlier on said oh he was this horrible guy during the war he would burn villages and he would do all this and this guy like comes in and he sees saffron and goes oh my god you found her my wife uh so this is the third this is the third person and and, and you just kind of oh christ another one 
<laughs> um, so he he's all happy. He thinks Mal's just delivered his wife back to him, and he's going to pay him, and everything's all of that. It's like, yeah, this guy doesn't seem like this butcher, this butcher of like space that you you claimed that he was. Um, and you know, later on, we even get some speculation that maybe you know she was actually kind of ashamed of like like turning on this guy. This is like, the one guy she actually kind of liked. And maybe didn't like the idea that she she'd betray them. Um, how much you want to believe that is another thing, because we also hear about the uh, technician, presumably the security technician, presumably where she got all these codes from. Um, how he turned up dead after she ran off with him. Uh, yeah, isn't that convenient? Yeah, she claims she didn't kill him later on to Mal, but I mean, I don't know. I don't know why she would lie at that point, though. Yeah, there's no reason I mean... for her to lie. Maybe they, I don't know, pissed off some bandits or something and. Like, don't get me wrong, you know, that she killed him, you know, because a loose end is still the most obvious answer. And it very much might be the case. It just seems strange for her to lie at that stage. Uh, mm. she's, she's kind of all in, you know, everything's open now anyway, so it, ju it just seems weird. Yeah. Uh, but the he walks back in and they've got the guns on each other and that obviously raises some questions and he's like, yeah, I'm not an idiot. Like, I suspected something might be up. But, uh, so we have a bit of a standoff. Um, and you know, like all this stuff is fairly amusing. You know, hearing the Yolanda name, Mal kind of making fun of it, the whole thing. Um, and they 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 get out. Heist is relatively successful. You know, they have to make a bit of a runner because the security forces are showing up. He's got like a a watch that's got like an alarm system on it. He's like, like a panic button. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, they they sneak off. They get away, and it's in the the ride to the location where she kind of breaks down and uh, gets all emotional and talks about him and. And Mal says a couple of things like, you know, I've seen you without your clothes on, but I never thought I'd see you naked, which is actually a pretty good line to be fair. Um, yeah. But you know, he he sits down next to her, and you know, he's like, I won't tell anyone that you, you you broke down in front of me, and she's like, well, I won't tell anyone how easily it was to get your gun, and you know, she's played him again. She he's fell for it. She's she's put on the waterworks, and she's she's going to make him strip, and he's like, that's just low. So she leaves him abandoned in the middle of nowhere, butt ass naked. And she goes off to the trash, com trash not Which compactor, is, uh, but yeah, you know, obviously that, that's where we found him at the start of the episode. Yeah, uh, she's going to have to find the, the the trash box where they put it, and she's looking through the the trash for for the gun. And which is obviously the literal reason why the episode's called Trash, if not the only reason. But um, you know, because yeah, you know, because they're rummaging through trash. Yeah, but there's also metaphorical reasons to call it trash. Uh, yeah. But uh, an hour is already there. She tries to shoot it with the laser gun, doesn't work because it's an ancient relic. But hey, she's got another one that works just fine. And she's like, yeah, this was always part of the plan. I was meant to make you think that I was just gone and had no interest in participating. But really, the whole time, I was the insurance plan because you were going to pull your shit. Um, and since I am trained in seduction and all these techniques, I know how to play your game. So here we are. Basically, not going to be as stupid as Mal is and fall for your <laughs> shit, is what she was saying <laughs> I know, I, I do kind of love when Mal's like coming back in the ship when they come to pick him up and like Wash and Zoe are just kind of like giggling and just don't know how to like look at him and Mal's not even trying to cover up, he's it's, not like... He's very stoic about it all. He's not hiding his junk but I love that, so those two are giggling like school kids and don't know what to do and they're trying not to look down but you get to Kaylee and she's like, like good job Cap and she's not, I mean she's not, not that she's looking down either but she's just so casual. Not, not even bothered. Doesn't care. Um... Yeah. And that's a, and you, I you could you could basically like she doesn't she almost doesn't even notice is the way it's played, and then of course you have that great cut at the end where it cuts to the the credits where the 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 you know, the, the the door the the left door is coming up, up yeah. yeah it's coming up and it cuts to the shot where it's just covering his junk as it's rising so yeah. is, is the last he's shot he's just there looking out going what? job well done ha hands behind the head just like yep it's been a good day <laughs> like, yeah. so you know um. This is a fun episode. It's not, it's not a standout of the season or anything like that, but it's it's got its moments. I mean, it, in in that sense, pretty similar to the, the first one of these with the saffron in there. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's fine. Yeah, I uh, think the first one's more memorable because it is just consistently hilarious. No, I think it is um, a very funny episode. That one, and that's why it's it's more. And you know, the, the, just the concept of oh, it was the first time that these things were done, so it's by its nature a little bit funnier. 
Yeah, the, um, the one scene we've kind of glossed over, though, is the LSU with Simon and Jane, which is important for yes. the overall context of the show. Uh, you know, so he's, he's patched up Jane, he's lying on the on the table, but he is paralyzed because of what he's given him uh, for the time being. So, you know, and it's kind of sinister, you know, Simon's kind of leaning over and he's like, oh, can you move? And Jane's like, no. And, you know, and Jane's pretty funny here as he's trying to move his arms and legs and he can't, and he, he just has this worried look in his face. And... He's like, hey, how much did they offer you? And he's like, that's crazy tough. He's like, no, look, I want to make something clear, Jane. If you're on this table, you're safe. I'm never going to, you know, betray my, you know, the trust of a doctor. I'm never going to do anything out of revenge because I'm part of this crew and I'm your medic. And I'm, you know, it's it's almost like he's kind of been inspired by Mal a little bit here. You know, if you go back yeah. to, like, you know, Mal saying you're part of my crew earlier in the season, like he's kind of like taking that, that it's, mantra it's on board. Very, very similar style of speech. Yeah. Um... And he leaves the room, and you know, if there's, there's a great moment where he says, "Is anyone out there?" And like River just pokes her head around the the, the you know the door in the entrance. And he's like, "Anyone else?" <laughs> and then when pretty reasonable request. When Simon leaves at the end, and you know he's just, he's made his statement. It's a very you know very proper, elegant, and civil sort of speech that he's given. He walks out, and then River just just pokes her head in and says, "And also, I can kill you with my brain." It's kind of terrifying. Yeah, there was a weird uh, editing sort of hiccup here with continuity, where uh, the shot before it goes in for her medium close up, where she says the line, she actually sticks her head way in further, and when you go in for the medium close up, it's not actually that far in; it's actually back sort of level with the door. It's a minor little thing; it's not a big deal, but it was something I noticed when I was uh, when I was watching it again. Those, those things are fine until you notice them. And then they do bug you just enough to take you out of the moment, and it's just irritating. Which is obviously why they, you know, make an effort not to do that usually. Yeah, it's one of those things. Every so often they'll slip through, and you just kind of have to live with it. No, you know, it happens with everything, especially at the speed that these things are turned around. But you know, it, it's not it doesn't really matter. It's just it's just a minor irritant. Yeah. Plus, I mean, ultimately, like, is there a better take continuity wise where the shot lines up? Probably, but is it worth using that over the better line? You know, reading. You know, maybe the, maybe the, the line delivery is not as good and the one that matches better. So it's like, you know what? Yeah, go with a better line. It's more important than the continuity. It, oh, know, it is absolutely. Because let's be honest, ninety five percent of people won't even notice. Yeah, and I don't even think I did the first few times I saw it. You know, I, I, I don't know when I started noticing it, but but once you notice it once, you'll notice yeah. it every time. Yeah, but that's fine. Like. <laughs> Even the most perfect movies have tons of these little flaws that you start to notice once you've seen them enough. Oh, they do. Pick pick your favorite movie. Go to IMDb and look in the goofs section. It'll be full of them. Oh yeah, tons of them. Uh, so yeah, not a super notable episode oh, oh, of Firefly. Um, do you know Wesker knocked over my chair earlier today and knocked over your chair? Yeah, he jumped up in the back with such force that the entire thing tipped over. Um, and. Ever since, like, normally there's, like, a sort of natural point where it stops leaning back, and now it feels like it's going to keep going unless I kind of make a point oh, of stopping. Um, yeah, no, my chair did that at one point. There was a, there's a, uh, there's usually, a, like, a twizzle knob on the bottom that you can tighten up, and that'll stop it going too far back. Oh, good. That's probably what it is, but it, it feels unsafe. Every time I lean back, I'm like, oh, no, I'm going too far. <laughs> yeah, I've done that, and, and uh, it, it, it took me, like, a good month of going... Okay, that was that was close. I should probably look into this. And then, and then going, but I'm sat down now, and I'm going to leave it <laughs> until until it got okay. I was just like, no, 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 this is actually dangerous now. I'm going to figure this out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it, yeah, obviously, it's more stuff with uh, with Saffron, which I do believe if the show kept going, we'd probably get more of her. She's probably be mm. a recurring thing every once in a while. Um, just every every season or so, they'll have. Oh, it's the saffron episode. And I also, I also think that she probably would have eventually had redemption. I feel like that's really what you do with her eventually. Uh, probably, I, I can see the episode. She's actually settled down and doing stuff, but they're suspecting that it's all just a ruse as usual. Mm. Yeah, I can see uh, that. Yeah. Yeah, and then of course the the Simon Jane stuff is some solid character kind of continuation for them. Um, yeah. And yeah, so that's basically it. Uh, but that, that, that's you know, that's the episode. It's uh, yeah, it's a fun one. Uh, next time we've got the message, which is a bit more on the dramatic side. Um, and it's notable because it's the last one they filmed. Uh, they, and they knew they were cancelled. Uh, actually, I don't know if it was the last one they filmed. I might be misremembering that part. But I know for a fact that they they found out. No, actually, no, I think it was. There's a funeral scene next episode, which I'm fairly certain 
was the last scene they shot. I, I I remember them talking about this in the documentaries. At the very least, they knew they were cancelled by the time they shot it. Because I remember so it felt particularly poignant. Yeah. So I I remember them all saying that they actually the, the mood of the funeral was actually kind of accurate. Like they were all feeling kind of depressed and <laughs> just, just bur- bury a script. Like. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, so yeah, messages next time. Uh, with actually the the second, I believe, of the actors on the show who has done the trifecta. Uh, the first one was back in the pilot, uh, but as in, what I mean by that is an actor who's been on Buffy, Angel, and Firefly, all his different characters. Um, mm. uh, the second and of of only two, because obviously this show didn't go on that long, so it's not like there was hell. There wasn't even that many characters who did it for Buffy and Angel. You know, there wasn't a lot of like repeated actors who'd played the who played different roles. Uh, no, I mean you've only you've got a handful that are on this, and then one of Buffy or Angel. Oh yeah, because even Mal and Zoe and uh, right, River right, because fall into that. Buffy and Angel, by their nature of being connected, people tended to, if they were on both shows, play the same role. Not all of them, obviously, but tended to. Yeah. Uh, that said, there is at least one actor in Buffy who played two different roles on the same show. <laughs> yeah, it happens. That was Brian Thompson who played the uh, Luke in the first two episodes, and then the Judge in two episodes in season two. Uh, for anyone who was curious, who I was thinking of there. There may have been another example as well, but that's the one that always. There's probably a bunch in the makeup. Um, well, he was in makeup, but. No, no, but like you know, just some of the the, the generic, not as as memorable you know people in the makeup. So, but you know, probably played multiple ones in makeup. Oh sure. Well, yeah, but you can still I can still recognize his voice and like see that it's Brian Thompson. But yes, yeah. the ones that are completely coated in makeup and like undistinguishable. I'm sure there's probably some actors in there. Yeah, that were used multiple times. Because yeah. why not? I can't tell who they are. <laughs> so well, well, that's the thing. Who cares? People who who do that are generally pretty good at doing that. You know, physical acting, so they can just kind of keep them on the staff and use them oh. multiple times. I can't think of another example though. Uh, the the main uh, uh, you know gentleman in Hush, the main guy in Hush, yeah. uh, he came in. He came back to play. Um, I can't remember what we called it, but it was the third episode of season seven, uh, where there, there was the weird time thing where Willow wasn't being seen by anyone else, and the yeah. demon who was like, eating parts of her flesh was played by the same guy. I'm sure. Actually, no, no, no. Okay. What's that? Him? Or was he the Uber Vamp? He was. A, he definitely came back in season seven as one of the season seven villains. But he was. He was there a couple of times. Sure, I, I buy that. Um, and you could tell when you looked at him because he had a very similar, you know, kind of look. Facial structure. Yeah. Um. I, I would even be surprised if someone told me he was also their Kinderstone in season two of Buffy, but I don't think he was. I don't think he showed up until season four. Uh, their Kinderstone, for everyone who doesn't know, was their kind of Freddy Krueger style knockoff. Uh, in the uh, episode Killed by Death. He wore a hat as well and everything. Um, that, that felt like an episode was like, okay, we, we have two episodes before we get to the two-part finale. We need one just to kill time. Uh, Freddy Krueger knockoff. <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> yes, just do that. That is uh, the, the bane of network TV is, uh, <laughs> we, we need an episode to kill time. Just make anything up. And it came after like one of the most emotionally like tense episodes of the entire show up to that point. And it was like the next one was like, yeah, that's still a Freddy Krueger knockoff episode. And Buffy for some reason scared of hospitals and has this really depressing story about her, her cousin who died in the hospital. I'm like, yeah, this has never been mentioned before. What the hell is this thing? Also, lots of people die in hospitals. That's true. That's true. A, a reasonable presage probably die in hospitals because you're, you're there being treated and dying and then you die. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing that happens. Um, yes, so there you go. That is a uh, trash. Uh, so next time we'll be the message. Uh, let us know what you thought of this episode in the comments below. You can like and subscribe, all that stuff. You can get us on the Twitters, uh, mail underscore fuzz for channel updates. If you want to support the show, you can do that by rating... Actually, no, there's no audio podcast version for this one, so never mind. <laughs> I was going to say go rate the podcast, but you can't. Uh, but yeah, you can get us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash TV. If you want to support us for as little as a dollar per month, you can do that. Um, and get some bonuses. The $5 tier, you get early stuff, uh, including these Firefly reviews. Um, and coming up, the, the show we're replacing Firefly with Six Feet Under, which was voted for by patrons, will be Patreon exclusive at the $1 tier. So if you're interested in us talking about Six Feet Under uh, in 2020, then uh, $1 per month will get you access to those once they start rolling out. It's kind of weird that 2020 is, as, as we're recording this, about a month away. Mm-hmm. Yet it still feels 
weird that oh yeah 2020 is like in a month it still feels weird in the future yeah uh, also thank you to keith beard who sponsors these firefly reviews uh you can sponsor a show uh, at the ten dollar tier he does that there uh so thank you to him uh but that is uh that is us that has been already cancelled so thank you once again for watching or listening we always appreciate it keep watching tv guys uh but curse your son but inevitable betrayal